welcome to Sheboygan County Government working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Bill Gehring. And today we're very pleased to have a couple of guests to talk about the non-motorized transportation pilot program in Sheboygan County. First, Dirk Zeilman, who is chair of the advisory committee, and Mary Ebeling, who is our project manager. Welcome. Thank you. There's been quite, about a, quite a bit of talk about this program, and I'm sure folks who are watching this are following this a little bit in the newspapers or perhaps have uh, watched the program before and, and heard an update. But, you know, we're getting into the point now where project applications are coming in and there's just some excitement building around this program. And we wanted to start with setting the stage a little bit. Mary, perhaps you could start. What's the primary mission objectives of this non-motorized transportation program? Well, the primary mission of this program is really to create a mode shift, to sort of encapsulate it. And what we mean by that is for making it possible for people to have the opportunity to choose to bicycle or walk to a destination. So walking from their house with children to school or potentially jumping on a bike to go eight, ten blocks to go to the grocery store or pick up a gallon of milk around the corner on foot. Um, that's what we're really trying to do. And, so and not a mood shift. No, not a mood shift. <laughs> but a, a mode shift. shift. So transportation mode, one mode being automobile, the other two pedestrian and bicycle. Very good. And Adam, I think there's a lot of sentiment out in the county that this is recreational trails. And that, as Mary said, that's not really the purpose. It's to try to get people out of their cars, onto bikes or walking, to work, to school, to church, um, rather than just riding around for recreational and exercise purpose. And, and that, I think, has to be clear because there are a lot of people are thinking, when they think biking, they think recreational. And we're trying to shift, as Mary said, that mode shift or that, that kind of mindset shift that we can walk or we can, we can bike. Uh, and I advise your uh, listeners and watchers, uh, don't just think about the last couple of days where it's been minus 20 degrees. Uh, the weather will get nicer, and we want you out there walking and biking. So the, really, the intent of the program is really to change people's behavior, to make different choices about how they're going to and from. Now, we heard a little over a year ago, Sheboygan County was going to receive up to $25 million for the implementation of this program. What's the status of the funding? What's been happening with that? Um, I guess I'll ask for a little bit of clarification. Up to $25 million, mm -hmm. um, basically up to $6.25 million a year. Um, and as far as the status goes, um, I guess I'm looking for a little clarification. Have we received any of the funds yet? Are you anticipating a certain amount each year, as you, as you mentioned? And how does it work? I mean, when, when you say you're going to receive up to $25 million from the federal government, is that just written on a check and handed to you, or what's that process involved? Okay, um, we have not received our funds for 2007 yet, and that has to kind of do with a little bit of, <clears throat> excuse me, the change up that's going on in Washington right now. Um, the monies are funneled to Sheboygan County um, on a reimbursement basis. The State Department of Transportation is administering those monies, so as projects move forward and work is completed in Sheboygan County, um, then the project sponsor can apply for reimbursement of their costs. So it's really a reimbursement it program. Is. It's not just granted to the county and we can spend it as we wish. Correct. Um, you know, might be simpler in some ways, but that's not the way it works. Basically, it's a pass-through um, dollars. So what that means is the federal government is passing those dollars through the State Department of Transportation. And I think early on, some people may have been under the impression that, well, geez, we were going to have $25 million handed to us. And as you just described, it doesn't quite work that way. But also, we've been careful to emphasize up to $25 million. What happens with some portions of that money? You just mentioned the Department of Transportation is involved. Well, the federal government charges for their administrative costs. Um, I don't get to see a line-by-line -line breakdown of what those are going to be. Um, and that's determined on a yearly basis. Um, and the department, so there'll be a, basically, it's being referred to as a takedown almost. It's like a, a bill or an invoice we're getting from the federal government for them to provide us and handle this money. Um, the State Department of Transportation is working very hard to reduce their administrative costs and uh, have committed to doing certain project reviews in-house. Um, 
we don't know what those costs are going to be because it's going to vary project by project. Um, for example, if there's a very complex infrastructure project mm -hmm. with a lot of you know, basically um, legislative reports and, and surveys to do, environmental surveys, for example, um, there might be additional work that needs to happen to clear those projects so we can spend our money. And that's when we might get some administrative costs. But bottom line, over the next four years, uh, of that 25 million, we're thinking maybe 18 to 20 million will actually make it to Sheboygan County. Okay, very good. And that's a nice transition. We now know that, you know, you've just shared with our viewers who perhaps are watching something like this or following this for the first time. We're getting up to 25 million. It's going to be for mode shift to change pe people's behavior, get more people walking and biking. And we're going to see this money over a four year time frame. Right. Uh, Dirk, you've been just taking the lead with this advisory committee, and perhaps you could share a little bit about the advisory committee and, and some of the work that you've been doing with the advisory committee for nearly a year now. Not quite a year. We started in June of 2006, but it's a 30-person uh, committee, and it's a marvelous committee. Uh, we have just the widest diversity of people. We have doctors on there. We have business people on there. We have just volunteers. We have people who like to... Uh, like to bike and, and are great recreational bikers. And putting that all together, it's turned into, I think, a spectacular committee, which has been very committed. We have had numerous meetings. Uh, I was telling Mary, I counted it up uh, last month in January, I, w I attended 16 meetings of the uh, advisory committee. So that keeps us, keeps us hopping, uh, but we think we're making some progress. And what, what kind of progress have you made? What have you been working on? Uh, what we did as a committee is we said, how are we going to get applications? And we went out and we encouraged people to uh, talk to the planning department. And we said, we don't want them to just trickle in because then we don't really have a good way to assess them. So we created cycles. And the first cycle deadline was December 15th of last year of 2006. And we got 18 applications. From here on in, over the next three and a half years, the cycles will be March 31st and September 30th. We take uh, the applications that come in over that six-month period, bunch them together, and then try to assess them and recommend them to the uh, County Board Joint Resource Transportation Committee, uh, either for approval or there may be some cases where we just don't think it's the proper uh, application or the proper project, and we might uh, recommend denial. So I know you've developed criteria, you've developed applications, you've, you've sent out applications, you've gotten your first round in. In a nutshell, how would you describe the role of the advisory committee? I mean, what, what's really their job? When it, What's the bottom line from a standpoint of their role and responsibility? The advisory committee has a lot of different uh, inputs, I think. Uh, part of it is just the understanding of the larger Sheboygan County community. That's where we can add value because we're dealing with professionals, um, but we also need to know what are the needs of that community. And even though it's 30 people, we have contacts all throughout Sheboygan County. So that's one. The other is, is oversight. Uh, we talked a little bit about it before. Uh, many of us in the Citizens Committee come from the private sector. And I think most of us probably scratch our, scratch our head at the complexity and, frankly, the cost of just the administrative portion of this. And, and we want to make sure that the dollars that have been allocated to Sheboygan County are spent as effectively and as efficiently as possible. Uh, we talked a little bit about it at committee, and I think in the first few months we said, wow, there's 25 million, how do we spend it? Now we're focusing on how do we create the most mode shift? And whether that's going to cost us 10 million or 5 million or 15 million, that shouldn't really be the major motivator. It's how do we get people out of their cars, onto bikes, or walking. And final question before turning it over to Bill. Uh, folks might be thinking, all right, this advisory committee, I know it's very active. They've got a lot of good people on it. A lot of good work has gone on. But are they the final decision maker? How does that work in, the, in the, the, the overall process? Right. The advisory committee works very closely with a very professional county planning staff. Uh, and we analyze each of the applications that come in. At our full committee, then, we'll vote on what to recommend or what to deny. But then we make those recommendations to a board, a, a county committee that has been formed by the board chairman and the board. It's a joint resource and transportation committee. There are nine members, and they really have been delegated by the full board to make the decisions. So they are really the ultimate deciders. 
We recommend, they have indicated to us that they're going to put a lot of weight on our recommendations, but the final decision is theirs. Very good. Thank you, Dirk. Uh, personally, as the board chair, and I think that the board also shares this concern, that the projects somewhat be spread throughout the whole county. Have there been outreach efforts and what has been going on in that area to alert communities to what they might apply for? Can I take that, Mary? Or? Um, I guess so. The, the recent, most recent efforts that we've done as a series of three um, listening sessions that actually our public outreach subcommittee um, formed from the, count of the citizens committee um, decided that they wanted to do. So I have to give them the nod for really taking that on and wanting to do the extra work. And we made sure to hold those at a variety of locations around the county. Um, we had one in Elkhart Lake, um, one in Sheboygan Falls, and the next one is going to be in Cedar Grove. And that's on the 19th, which I believe is Monday. So we're trying to get to a broad section of the community. Um, we paired, uh, I'm just trying to think how to say this, we also paired that with other meetings that the consultant did for the comprehensive plan that tried to broadly sprinkle those meetings across the entire county. We've also worked with um, a number of communities that are not in our urbanized area, you know, Sheboygan Cole or Sheboygan Falls, um, to develop proposals for safe routes to schools applications for, for one thing, uh, repaving of roads with bike lanes and sidewalks and, and small villages in the county. So we're working with those communities to try to get those applications out there because we're very concerned with but making Chairman sure. Chairman Guerin, you can be assured that uh, we're very cognizant of that. It's, it's yeah. just fun and interesting. When I talk to people in Sheboygan, they're convinced that all the money is going to be spent out in the county. <laughs> and then I talk to people in the county and they're convinced that it's all going to be spent in the city. And we're, we have actually develop some calculations uh, and it's not going to be exactly I mean not one hundred thirty two dollars and forty four cents for every population but we want to be very careful in making sure that it does get spread out equitably throughout the county okay that's good to hear yeah. uh, how will the actual selection process be made you now have 18 applications pending there will be more coming in what's the process we go through the citizens advisory committee the initial step however is that our planning department works it through and we had developed a ranking and rating system and the planning professionals uh, take a look at each of the uh, applications and review them, rank them and make some comments on them. Then they come to, uh, they get assigned to some of our subcommittees. Within the subcommittee one member is really assigned to be the expert if you will or the person that's really the in-house go-to person and he or she then presents to the subcommittee and then on that recommendation we will will go to the full citizens committee and after that it goes to the uh, to the resource uh, transportation committee so it sounds a little bit complicated but there's a process here where we're looking at it from almost every direction so we can give good recommendations to the county board do we have any rough timetable at this point on when the first recommendations might be made internally time is getting close uh, uh, the citizens advisory technical committee will be uh, voting on these applications on February 22nd. Mm. That same day, it will go to the Joint Resource Transportation Committee. Now, it is their choice. They could, if they wished, make a decision right that day, or they might say, well, we've just seen this. We want a little time to, to chew on it and look it over and study it and defer it till their next meeting. But from the Citizens Advisory Committee standpoint, our recommendations will be coming down on February 22nd. Okay. With that timetable, do you foresee that there could be projects that would be begun at least in the summer? I think it would be good to get something going to show the public that we mean business, but I don't know what the timetable might be on your end. Well, I, I think that that's realistic, um, particularly if we're talking about projects that don't involve construction, because there are you know, additional checkoffs that need to be made before you can actually essentially stick a shovel in the ground. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about things like education and outreach, projects or um, installing racks for bicycles at county facilities, things like that. Those can happen on a much quicker time frame. So I think summer is, is a pretty, pretty good estimation. But it is our goal to get at least some ground broken yeah. uh, this spring. Uh, we have been encouraged by members of the Joint Resource Transportation Committee, don't necessarily move too fast mm -hmm. because you want to develop that overall vision or that overall framework of what you want to accomplish because it's so tough you might look at one application it looks pretty good 
But if you don't have anything to judge it against, uh, we don't want to be in a situation where in the first year or two we've allocated all the funds and then in year three a really marvelous project comes through and we say, sorry, we can't do it. So we're working closely with the consultants that have been hired by the county and with them saying develop that framework and then we'll try to plug in the projects that make the most sense. And so that uh, probably the first round, the round that's going to the Transportation Resource Committee on February 22nd will be one of the smaller cycles uh, and it mm -hmm. will just build up over the next year and a half. And obviously before we commit millions of dollars we want to make sure that the money is in the pipeline to come back to us in the state so that the county wouldn't be on the hook for for the project. It'd be easy for me to say that's your problem, <laughs> but I think if that happened, that would be all our problems. The other thing is it's going to have to be made very clear to grant recipients that they cannot spend any monies until they receive basically notice to proceed. They're authorized to spend those monies. So that kind of checkpoint should keep us from getting in that uncomfortable position that you just referred to. And then finally, is there a drop dead date by which we have to spend the last dollar or can it kind of sit around for a while until all the projects go through the pipeline? We have to have it obligated by <clears throat> the end of 2009, but it can be spent, and, and I'm not sure if there's an absolute deadline, but over the, I would say maximum the next 12 to 18 months, but it has to be ob obligated mm -hmm. by the end of that four year period. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mary, you just mentioned you know the, that it would have to be authorized before the dollars could be mm -hmm. spent. Authorized by who? Um, by the State Department of Transportation and Federal Highways. They're the, basically the administrators of this grant money. So Federal Highways is passing the monies through to our State Department of Transportation. I'm glad you raised that because again, those who are watching this from the outside thinking, well, why does this take so long? Or how, can, how difficult can this be? And, and frankly, it's one of the more complex pilot programs around right now because again you're working with the federal level, the state level, the local level. We're working with municipalities that are applying for all the applications so you can easily have a minimum of four units of government involved yep. and anyone who knows anything about government uh, things are going to take some time so there's lots of checks yes. and balances and, and I know part of our frustration frankly at the county level has been cutting through some of the tape at the state and federal level to get this rolling. Um, but what makes it even, even more Interesting is that this is a pilot program, yes. one of only four communities in the country right. that were allocated dollars. So that means there isn't all this precedent out there. So right. you can't say, well, what did this community do and then just kind of follow it. You're, we're creating precedent with virtually everything that we do, and that unfortunately takes a little bit longer. It's kind of cool because we're breaking new ground and nobody really knew how to administer this. I mean, from the federal level all the way down, we're trying to figure out as we go what the best way to, to move this forward is. So it's, we're struggling together to do the administrative part of it. Bill and I recently attended a Wisconsin Counties Association meeting and I've heard this at a, a couple of late, uh, themes of late when you talk about taxation and communities and, and what people are looking for. And again and again, we're hearing, you know, people are really looking to go to communities where there's good schools and good inf infrastructure and, and bike trails and places you can safely walk to and from your employment or to school, things of that nature. And obviously we had this grant more or less dropped in our lap, but uh, really is a tremendous opportunity to make some good th things happen for this community. And people are becoming more energy conscious as, as the cost of, of gas goes up. Uh, but yeah, this can be a, a way for Sheboygan County to set ourselves apart from some of the other communities. And if we do this right, it will make it more attractive uh, to live in and uh, to work in and to go to church in and uh, raise your families. And that's what it's all about. Uh, it, it's important though that we take these dollars and we spend them wisely. You talked about people and what their concerns are. And sometimes I think there's that concern are you just going to get out there and just spend it for the sake of spending? And our commitment is that we're going to try to do the very best we can to make sure that these dollars are spent effectively in Sheboygan County. Our viewers watching this might be wondering, all right, gained a lot of information here. I understand what it's about and where the money's coming from and how the process is going to work, but they might be thinking, well, what kind of projects you know, could really happen? What's possible with this money? My question would be, what kind of applications, Mary, have you received so far? What are some of the range of applications you've received? And give our viewers a flavor for just where this money can go. 
Okay, well, I can start and you can feel free to jump in because there's a lot going on here, but we've received a wide range of applications. Um, anything from doing um, a countywide Safe Routes to Schools planning program and, and outreach into some of the schools to kind of bring them in and start implementing it on the ground. Uh, we've received applications for some sidewalk connections in communities that don't have those yet. Um, some actual physical infrastructure projects to connect safe routes to schools. Uh, I guess, I'm, go ahead and feel free to well, jump in. And a lot of it uh, is connected to schools in some way. As, as we as a committee look at that, that's probably where you're going to get the most mode shift. Uh, the kids that will walk or bike to school as opposed to taking the bus. And there are some benefits to the community then too because if you have the proper uh, bike ped paths around a school, that lessens the obligation of the school district to bus your kids. And we talked uh, with Sheboygan Falls and they have identified certain areas that if, uh, if we have the right bike paths there, uh, over 200 kids could walk or bike to school that now have to be, have to be bused. And that's a savings and that happens in in uh, uh, Cedar Grove and Oostburg and Elkhart Lake, virtually every school district has some benefit there. And it, it's also a health benefit because it's healthier for the kids uh, to walk or bike to school as opposed to jumping on that bus. I've also heard discussion about um, interconnecting more of our trails and curtain in infrastructure in place that we may have, you know, we have the old blank roll, road and we have some pretty nice trail system already in place. There's always room for improvement from a standpoint of sidewalks, but I know there are some areas that you're aware of where you know the trails may not connect and it's really impeded the ability for people to come and go or for kids to walk to school. Do you have any applications along those lines or are you anticipating any? We could talk about town of Sheboygan um, as one example of an application we have in. Um, we've heard a lot from the community about wanting to make a connection out to Maywood Environmental Center. Um, the environmental center started to work with the town of Sheboygan to kind of craft a plan that will connect to the Old Plank Road Trail using existing county roads that have paved shoulders, but also creates a route for safe routes to schools to Lincoln Erdman and to the new Firehouse Park. So that's a really interesting um, proposal that we've received. But that is why it is important to develop that framework, share it with the larger Sheboygan County community, and then as projects come in, we can kind of plug them in. Does it work or does it, does it not? Uh, if we just look at each individual project, at the end of the five years, you could have, or four years, you could have a pile of good projects, but if they're not interconnected, you haven't really accomplished what we're trying to accomplish. So, so building, looking at specific projects, but also looking at that larger picture is important. Yeah. We all know that you know, if you build it, they will come, although that's not always necessarily the case if people don't feel safe. Or frankly, folks get, in, get so used to getting in that vehicle to take their child a few blocks down the road or to go to the local supermarket. We know that a lot of that is educational and just get, getting people more comfortable to look at other alternatives. Do you have any applications that, that you're looking at supporting or recommending for approval to help get awareness out there, raise awareness out there to, so folks know more about the benefits of walking and biking. We do. Uh, a couple of outreach proposals, uh, a proposal from somebody who works with uh, what's called safe routes to schools. And it's kind of a code word, but it's making it uh, easier and safer for, for children to walk or bike to their schools. And they've been working with communities all across the state, and they've got a proposal in to help us. As you said, Adam, it's not just building the infrastructure, it's also convincing people to change the way they've been doing things. And in America, the culture is you might live one block away from a convenience store, but if you need that quart of milk, you jump in your car. And it's not that you're a bad person, it's just the way we've been, I think we've grown up thinking, and to try to change that mindset, but that's gonna be difficult. You said there's been one round of applications, 18 received so far, I think it was around $14 million in applications, About four, $4 million, four million dollars in applications. Yeah. And as you said, you're gonna be looking at that very carefully and taking additional time to make sure we do this right. Uh, when, do you, when do you see the next round of applications and do you offer us any assistance in completing those applications? The next round is, is coming up fairly quickly because we had kind of periscoped it just to get going. But the next round or the next cycle deadline is March 31st. And our planning department has been very helpful in the past, and I'm sure that... Yeah, um, what we 
done in, for the first round and what we're going to do in the future is if potential applicants have questions or need some help, we're offering assistance to that applicant to you know, get some mapping together if they need it, um, work on helping them sort of focus in their application to make sure it really meets the intent of the legislation. Basically, we want, we want to see good applications too and we want to see good projects, so we're, we're willing to help you know, to the maximum extent possible to get that, that accomplished. Well, we only have a couple of minutes remaining and a couple of thoughts I wanted to share. It was December of 05 that uh, Shannon Hayden, our former planning director, and Roger Lanning, our former highway commissioner, that the three of us went out to Washington, D.C. to where they had the kickoff for this program when we learned about the, Is that the opportunity. Two of the three are formers? Okay. Yes, and that's something. <laughs> uh, Roger Lanning has since retired and moved on to another position. Shannon has moved on to another position. And I can't tell you how grateful I am that the two of you are in your leadership roles because, Mary, you've stepped in and provided outstanding project management. And your position is so key to this. Absolutely. And Dirk, as you've heard me say on a number of occasions, your role in leadership with the advisory committee has been exceptional. And we thank you from a standpoint of county government for the work you've done and the work that all the advisory committee members have done. And I know, Mary, you recently hired an employee who is working with you. Uh, his name? Aaron Brault. Um, he comes with many years of planning experience, so mapping experience in particular. And uh, he's doing an excellent job. He's jumping right in and really adding value. So I think out. we've got some good people in place. Our new highway commissioner is Greg Schnell, who certainly is uh, now engaged in this process, and we are going to be hiring a new planning director, hopefully within the next few weeks, and that person will certainly have to jump in and get involved. But appreciate not only your leadership, but also leading by example from a standpoint of the biking you're doing. Dirk, I think, has gotten on the bike more in the last six months than probably in the last six years. How uh, many miles you got? Probably more in the last six months than the last uh, 30 years. 30 so. years. <laughs> but uh, I do think that it does make sense to lead by example. And uh, when I became part of this committee, uh, my wife and I went out and got bikes. When I became chair, I figured I better get a bicycle or they're going to throw me out the window. But uh, between uh, the beginning of August and uh, the end of, of 2006, uh, Sue and I kept track of what we call the utilitarian miles, where we otherwise would have used the car in 895 miles. So um, it does make a difference. And, and I think as households look at this, that's a benefit to a household. You're not only getting exercise, but you're saving money by going places that otherwise you'd be taking the car. Absolutely. And Mary, it doesn't seem like no matter how cold it is outside, you're riding your, your bike to work to and from each day. And I think, what are you putting on? A few miles Actually, one way? or Slightly less than a mile oh. from work. And I've been walking recently. Very um, good. Yeah, there's, it's, there's benefit to doing both. And it depends on what errands I need to run after work and how far away they are from the workplace. I might walk or I might bike. Right. And yeah, and it, it, it's really nice. I, I kind of, when I walk, I kind of laser in on the sidewalk conditions and things like that, which right. I can't really focus on when I'm on my bike. So. Well, again, and, and really what Mary has said, and I think we have to remind it, we so often kind of revert to biking, but walking is just as important a part of this project. Yeah. And uh, we encourage any of our uh, viewers, if they are aware of some place where they would walk, but they're, they're not they're concerned about the safety or something, let the planning department uh, know so we can be working on some of those projects. And that's a good point. If anyone watching this program wants to ask additional information, ask additional questions, get additional information, has some suggestions, uh, do you have a general phone number that you can provide that people can call? I sure can. It's 459-3060. 459-3060. Yes, and either speak to myself or to Aaron. Outstanding. Well, Dirk Seilman, Mary Ebling, thank you so much for joining us and talking about the non-motorized program. And again, we appreciate your leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Next month, Sheriff Mike Helpke will be here to talk about the roles and responsibilities of the Sheriff's Department. Some good things going there. And until then, on behalf of Chairman Bill Gehring and the Sheboygan County Board, thanks for joining us.